I was trained in Australia under one of the masters of uh, lymphatic system. So our lab was, was instrumental in setting up the conscious lymphocytic rat model. And the beauty of that is you actually harvest all the lymph from the intestine uh, continuously, free of anesthesia. Um, and, and then you can put anything into the stomach or into the duodenum and then looking at their transport, how the gut handles the lipid meal, where do they go, and, and all that. In the lymphatics, is, it's a wonderful place to sample things produced by the intestine. And the intestine is, um, is one of the major organs that secretes two of the body's major incretins. Now, what incretins are? These are gastrointestinal hormones whose production by the gut is stimulated by nutrients. So by having these incretins, and then if you have elevated blood sugar, um, then the pancreatic beta cells secrete insulin, and then, you know, take care of the blood sugar. So the incretins uh, are secreted, and most people measure blood incretin in the blood. Only problem in the blood is, you can imagine, the blood dilutes it manifold very quickly. And secondly, the blood has a protease. It's called DPP4, which hydrolyzes it very rapidly. So you have a double disadvantage. More dilution, great rate of, of degradation. So that's probably not the best place for you to study them. So we came up with the idea that maybe the lymphatic system is a much better system uh, to study that. And long and behold, when we study that, that's absolutely the case. Um, in the case of the glucagon-like polypeptide 1, GLP-1, GLP-1, um, the concentration is about tenfold higher in lymph than in, in the uh, portal blood. And in the case of GIP, it's about three to fourfold higher. One of the things you may wonder is, so what? It's higher. The reason why this is important is because the concentration is high in lymph, you do not need so much to measure them. And we actually, our lab is one of the only lab that I, I know of that can sample the lymph in the mouse, in conscious mouse. So as a result, you can actually measure the lymph from the mouse in conscious state and whenever their gene is being manipulated. Now, normally it's very difficult to measure them because the assay is just simply not sensitive enough. But because it's lymph, it actually allows these hormones to be measured. And now you open up a whole new research area and that is you can now actually look at how manipulation of certain genes, how does that affect uh, the, um, the, the ingredient secretion by the gut. The neurons and the dendritic cells and other cells in the lamina propria is exposed to that. That's exactly what, so the lymphatic concentration is more of a reflection of the actual concentration that these cells and neurons are exposed to, not the very low concentration that you measure in the portal blood, nor in the systemic blood, which is even lower. So that is really one of the uh, major research area that we are engaged in. We are very excited about it because through our work, we now may have actually discovered a third incretin. Now, this third incretin is an incretin made by the small intestine. It's called apolipoprotein A4. It's got a number of unique characteristics. It's a long-acting incretin with very long half-life. Instead of few minutes, it's actually few hours. So it acts a long time. And it has a lot of other properties as well. And we think that there may be three incretins that work together to, to maintain blood sugar. But A4 play another important role 
and that is April, April is made by the small intestine and is only stimulated by fat absorption. So we think A4 is the protein that link lipid and carbohydrate metabolism together. And this research is, is quite exciting. And we published that research and uh, the concept of A4 being an incretin has excited a company in Boston called Healthcare Ventures. They've actually licensed the technology and in the process of testing out whether it can be a potential diabetic drug for the treatment of type 2 diabetes mostly, may even have applications in type 1. A lot of the research will have to be probably in vitro because it's, it's easier to do and, and you can control the experimental condition so much better. However, um, we may want to also take advantage in the in vivo situation, baby rats because they are very young. Everything in their body is working very well. And that may offer us a window to look at lymphatic function and how actually uh, lipoprotein, lipids, excessive lipid, how does it affect the lymph lymphatic function? What about lymphatic permeabilities, lymphatic transport? I think, you know, uh, Catherine, not until we get a handle, better handle on how, first of all, lipid derangement and secondly, lymphatic function, then I think we're, we're, we'll probably be in better position to tackle this very, very difficult problem and debil debilitating problem. Our lab is mostly uh, involved in the in vivo. We are one of the really only groups that studies intestinal lymphatics quite regularly. Now that actually opens up a new area in the sense that there is fat tissue that are close by to the lymphatic vessels. And um, you know, there, there are a lot of fat in the gut and people call them bad fat. You know, they cause metabolic syndrome, a lot of that. But I think, you know, um, there is not enough work done in vivo you know, when you take those fat cells out of their environment and study them, it's very different from when they are in their natural environment, you see them much better. The intestine and the stomach, they're talking to each other. So when you, when you get the nutrient bypass the stomach, go directly to the, to the small intestine, then it secretes the incretins, which stimulate in turn the secretion of insulin. That secretion of insulin is much higher than if you go through the stomach. So one of the first instincts is you said, well, that's normal. Why, why are you so surprised? Because if you go directly to the small intestine, it's going to be empty faster. It's going to be empty faster. And by emptying faster, you're going to get a bigger incretin response, bigger insulin response. But the story is not so, so, so simple because what we find is that um, the stomach actually play a very important role in regulating the amount of insulin, the amount of incretin and insulin secreted by the small intestine. And at the end of the day, voila, interesting, the, the regulation of blood sugar is perfectly normal with less insulin being secreted. So we think stomach has a very big role. Very tempting to speculate. You know, people are doing a lot of gastric bypass surgery. Maybe what they're doing is, is they're making the incretins much respond faster and bigger uh, because now you take away the stomach factor as much. And so it corrects the blood sugar, but in the long run, it's that, so to speak, without liability, I'm not sure. Only time can tell. One of the things that I'm very interested in is to actually begin to properly culture the, the lymphatic vessel and just to see in culture system what they do. The beauty of it is we actually will be able to correlate the data from both in vivo as well as in vitro to look at what's going on here. And then coupled with our 
strong background in lipid biochemistry, I think you know we, we may have a chance to crack a, a problem, this big problem, with some clues, some insights. How does the lymphatic vessel change as a result of derangements in lipid metabolism? Until we begin to understand that process, you can physically remove fat or may even be lymphatic vessel. Only problem, that's going to come back. You have not cured the problem. The problem is how does this derangement, first of all, what causes the derangement of lipid metabolism? And secondly, how does this lipid derangement affect lymphatic function? And I think once we begin to have a handle on these two problems, then you are in a much better position to be able to deal with this rather sticky problem.